the world is alive with insects. With maybe as many as 30 million kinds, competition for food and space is intense. To stay ahead of their competitors, some species make long migrations, some go underground, while others occur in overwhelming numbers. On first inspection, it's hard to see anything special about the shield bug, but it belongs to a group which has developed some remarkable adaptations in its struggle to stay alive. And its ability to smell foul is just one secret of success. Shield bugs are not easy to see, but their smell is unmistakable. It's a bit like burning tar, and they taste disgusting. Pick one up by mistake, and you'll soon discover why their nickname is stink bug. Although they're generally overlooked, they are quite common, particularly in the southern counties. On this heath, there are birch bugs in the birch trees, green shield bugs in the oaks, and in the gorse bushes, gorse bugs. There are no points for guessing where the hawthorn shield bug lives. This species is quite common in cities, where its food plant is widely grown as an ornamental tree. Larger numbers and a greater variety of shield bugs occur on the continent, where it's warmer and drier. Some of these foreign species are occasionally transported into the British Isles in boxes of fruit and vegetables. They sometimes establish themselves in the wild during the summer months, but they rarely survive our cold, wet winters. The European turtle shield bug only thrives in the south of Britain where the winters are mild. It's easy to see how it got its name. Likewise, the bishop's mitre. Shield bugs are often mistaken for beetles, but they differ in several ways. Their shield is the most obvious difference. This leathery outgrowth from the thorax protects them from injury and deters predators as well as earning them their name. They belong to the order Hemiptera, which means half-wing. That's because only half of each forewing is transparent, like a fly's, while the other half is toughened for added protection. A beetle's entire front wing is modified into a horny wing case. In fact, its whole body is toughened, powerful jaws included. Whereas beetles munch solid food, shield bugs feed on liquids. Butterflies and moths also suck up fluids, but they don't compete with shield bugs because they have different mouth parts. A butterfly's coiled tongue is really a flexible tube designed for probing deep into flowers for nectar. This purple emperor butterfly is sipping dew from the surface of a leaf. A shield bug's mouth parts are formed into a slender, piercing proboscis which it drives into plants. By tapping plant veins, it can draw off an endless supply of food which is unavailable to other insects. But until this source of food is abundant in early spring, the shield bugs must stay under cover. The white dead nettle is one of our earliest flowering plants and several shield bugs rely on it for food in spring.
In April, there are mini disturbances at ground level as emerging bugs scramble for the light. Their first task is to find food. Nectar is a good source of sugar, and at this time of year, there is an abundance of flowers. But the flowers are also frequented by ants. By banding together, these small but fearsome hunters can easily overcome an insect 15 times their own size, even one that's heavily armored. But being smelly does sometimes have advantages. When an ant attacks, the bug brings its secret weapon to bear. Vibrating its body, it emits corrosive fluids which dissolve its enemies. The ant is literally melting away. The battle above is watched with interest from the ground. Chemical warfare isn't always effective. Sometimes diving for cover can be more worthwhile. The stripes warn predators that it's distasteful. But this message has to be learned the hard way. Left with a nasty taste in its mouth, the toad refuses a second helping. Pungent odors seem to have little effect on birds perhaps because they have a poorly developed sense of taste and smell. Even the undergrowth is a perilous place, full of traps and pitfalls. Caught in a rather sticky situation and trapped by all six legs, the future doesn't look bright for this bug. But it has another defensive tactic to fall back on. Most large insects can escape from a spider's web if they have enough time and if they can avoid attracting the attention of the venomous owner. One whiff of the bug repels the spider, buying the insect precious minutes. The shield bug now spits on its feet, using saliva to dissolve the sticky threads. And once it's escaped, it also uses this method to remove every last trace of silk from its feet. As the temperature rises in summer, the mature bugs disperse in search of a mate. They're reluctant to take to the air because they're relatively slow and clumsy flyers. Here, they're filmed in ultra-slow motion. Although their rear wings are fine and membranous, they're short, and their armored forewings are heavy and difficult to control. In comparison, beetles like this ladybird are much better flyers. Their hard wing cases, the modified forewings, act as aerofoils, providing lift and stability, while their extremely long hind wings provide power. In the battle for survival, beetles seem here to have an advantage. The sexes come together in April. There is no real courtship behavior. Males identify a mate by scent and grab the first receptive female they meet.
It's May, and the countryside is bursting with new life. Most females lay eggs a few days after mating. They're laid in batches of between 14 and 24, depending on the species. Each egg is attached to the food plant with small sticky droplets. female moves off to lay a second batch of eggs some distance from the first. This reduces competition for food between the two broods when they hatch. But by abandoning them, she leaves her eggs open to predation. This second bug should pose no threat but the newcomer reacts in a most unexpected manner. Piercing the eggs with her proboscis, she sucks one after another completely dry. This behavior, which has never been filmed before, probably provides this female with a rich source of protein for her own developing eggs, as well as reducing competition on the food source for her own offspring. The needle-like proboscis is clearly visible, probing for the last drop of fluid inside the eggshell. Bug eggs attract other insects too. Ants and beetles are partial to them, and flies and wasps parasitize them. In order to protect her eggs, a female of the species called the parent bug actually guards them by fending off potential predators. She sits on them like a broody hen until they hatch. Each egg looks like a miniature barrel. Small pores round the edge of the lid give entry to sperm prior to laying, but now serve to allow the developing embryo to breathe. The new generation starts hatching in June. The two small red patches are its eyes. The black triangle is a special spike called an egg burster, which the young bugs, called nymphs, use to tear and push off the egg cap. Newly hatched chilled bugs are soft and often brightly coloured. As their outer skin hardens, they take on darker, less obvious hues.
the nymphs bear little resemblance to their parents, but they can smell foul from an early age. This is a young common green shield bug. And these are newly emerged nymphs of the black and red striped species. It's not long before they too take on a darker tone. Young bugs change gradually, getting a little more like the adult at each molt. The small nymph has shed its skin once, while the larger one is ready to molt for a third time. After the third molt, small wing buds appear. They're clearly visible as black patches on the back of this striking nymph. By mid-July, the young have grown into adults. They have now molted five times and have fully developed wings. Shield bugs rarely cause any serious damage by sucking sap from crops. This species feeds on ripening corn, but its effects are negligible. Green shield bugs occasionally invade bean and pea crops, but they're easily controlled with insecticide sprays. Some shield bugs even help to control pests. Forest bugs hunt lethargic, soft-bodied larvae. They may seem slow and ineffective, but shield bugs can be around in such large numbers that they have a marked effect on pests. Piercing the caterpillar with its proboscis, the bug slowly sucks its victim dry. The bug's abdomen works as a pump, creating suction which helps to draw the fluids from its luckless victim. A young green shield bug is in no danger. It's too well armoured and foul smelling for a predatory species to tackle. We generally overlook shield bugs, or at best dismiss them as beetles. But at times they can make their presence felt. Pick a bug by mistake, and the fruits of your labour will positively pong. This does nothing to enhance the flavour of a blackberry and apple pie. Cryptic colours also serve shield bugs well. There's a bug in each of the following pictures. Autumn marks the end of a generation of shield bugs. By the time the leaves fall from the trees, all of last year's adults will have died. The glut of berries, hips and haws provides the new season's bugs with a feast before winter.
Each individual must accumulate a good supply of fat if it's to survive the long cold months ahead. In September, the green shield bug begins to change into more seasonal colours in order to blend in with its autumn surroundings. As the days get shorter and the nights cooler, the last bugs retreat for the winter. Forest bugs find hiding places among dead leaves where they'll shelter for the next seven months. Green shield bugs find sanctuary in dark crevices under the bark of trees. Several species crawl into the middle of grass tussocks or burrow into the soil. This pied shield bug looks dead, but in fact it's in a state of torpor, a sort of hibernation saving energy through the winter. Shield bugs retire for the whole winter except for the odd individual, which makes a special appearance for Christmas. Gathered in with decorative branches, a sleeping juniper bug soon wakes in the warm atmosphere and emerges to join in the festivities. The number and variety of insects on Earth is overwhelming. Many species, unable to compete, are facing extinction. But it looks as if the shield bugs are here to stay. Their shield protects them from injury and predators. They avoid competing with their closest rivals by having completely different mouth parts and feeding techniques. Some use camouflage to conceal their whereabouts, while others flaunt the fact that they're noxious. Added together, these features give shield bugs every chance in a highly competitive world. When it comes to survival, Stink bugs stand out on their own.